there, Susie. Out of bed. On your toes. This is the big day. The sun is shining, and your girl scout troop is going camping for the first time. The fun starts right after school. But how does the troop leader feel about it? Mrs. Lawrence is up early, too. Looks like a nice day. Later on, her husband and son are going off by themselves, going on a long planned fishing trip. Let's see now, there's lots to be done. What's first? Breakfast dishes, straighten up the house. Oh yes, finish packing the bedroll. While she works, Mrs. Lawrence wonders. Troop camping, will it go all right? Will they remember everything? Pancake syrup, first aid kit. She's not really worried. She and her troop have come far since that day, only a couple of months ago, when the girls first decided to go camping. Mrs. Lawrence remembers. A compass started the whole thing. Susie brought one to the meeting. Her big brother had lent it to her. She proudly showed it to the leaders while the patrols were getting together. She could tell them just how it worked. She thought it might be fun to make a map with the help of the compass. Susie wanted to show it off to her patrol, too, show her friends how to read it. Ah, Pat didn't think much of it. The compass was only good in the woods. The patrol leader had to call for order. And Mrs. Lawrence, going to see what the fuss was all about, got there just as Betsy had a bright idea. Let's go camping. Camping? Mrs. Lawrence knew nothing about camping. The girls knew nothing about it either, but they weren't going to let that stop them. After the first shock, Mrs. Lawrence managed to appear quite calm. The Court of Honor would discuss the idea. As she and the patrol leaders met, she secretly hoped there was some way out. But there wasn't. Betsy thought she'd invented camping. The others thought it was a wonderful idea, too. The Court of Honor approved the plan in no time at all. Mrs. Lawrence suggested that they needed to learn a few things first. Betsy took notes. They should talk the whole idea over in patrols. Maybe wait a few weeks before going on the trip. Then they can do some real planning. Planning. The troop minutes had a record of all the plans. What to eat, what to take, costs, things the girls wanted to learn. Miss Warner, the assistant leader, had come over for the evening to discuss troop camping. She and Mrs. Lawrence had decided they better do some planning of their own. One of the first steps was phoning the troop committee chairman. The committee could be a big help getting a third adult to go on the trip, arranging transportation. That night, the leaders looked into safety-wise. It and the troop camp book seemed to have all the answers for a couple of beginners. Could the troop committee meet next Wednesday evening? Good, they'll do it. Well, the groundwork was laid. But how about learning some of those skills? Know anything about outdoor cooking? Making bedrolls? Using knives? Knives? There's an easy one to start on. Housewives use them every day. No? These two don't seem to know a thing about jackknives. Want to try it? No, you do it. Oh, come now, it isn't that hard. The Girl Scout Handbook might help some. 
sure enough, there was everything they needed to know. How to open and close knives, how to care for them, how to use them. The girls were going to learn too, and at the very next meeting. It's that expert, Mrs. Lawrence, teaching the troop the first steps of using a knife. Why, really, there was nothing to it. It's easy to open with just a little practice. Girls who had their own knives shared them with their friends. Everyone learned quickly, together. Mrs. Lawrence showed how to sharpen a knife, too. She had been surprised to learn that a dull knife is more dangerous to use than a sharp one. Well, how do you use a knife? The handbook had been a big help there. And the leaders had practiced a lot at home before showing the girls how to whittle. Leave plenty of room and always cut away from yourself. It takes plenty of practice to do it right. Most of the girls caught on pretty well. But Ethel held her stick so that the knife might have cut her knee. Miss Warner showed her the safe way to do it. There weren't going to be any accidents in this troop. From using knives to making fires was a small and simple step. Miss Warner had already taught the patrol leaders how to build a fire. Now they were going to teach their patrols. All of them working pretty much on their own that day, though the leaders were near to help out if needed. Jean had made a fuzz stick. She was new in the troop, and it was nice to have her take an active part in the patrol. How does it go? You start with an A. Nancy tells them what to do. With everything going so smoothly, the leaders were beginning to relax and enjoy themselves. The patrol leaders were enjoying themselves, too. They liked the role of teacher. Skills were being learned, but there was more to it. Looking around, you could tell that the girls were growing up a little. While they learned to build a fire together, they couldn't help but learn more about getting along with each other. They seemed to like being on their own. They weren't leaning so heavily on the leaders. They were becoming independent. For instance, when Jane's patrol couldn't decide who should light the fire. That kind of thing can start trouble. But the leaders needn't have worried. The girls could solve their own problem. And solve it fairly, too. Sharing, taking turns, even being a winner takes practice. And the girls were learning. Fires are fun, especially for 11-year-olds. But fires have a purpose, too. So a cookout was planned at the town park. No stay-at-homes that day. Not when they were making taffy apples. The cricket patrol brought the sticks for the apples. Long green ones that weren't soft in the middle. The scouts could whittle points on their own sticks. Each girl had brought an apple and a nickel to pay for the syrup and the butter. 
They had voted to pay for the pot out of the troop treasury. They were going to need it on the camping trip later. Okay, Cookie. The syrup is done at last. Come and get it! That did it. Things like this were really fun. grew closer, plans were made and changed and made again. The Court of Honor talked it all over, found answers to last-minute questions. How would they get their equipment to the campsite? The troop committee was providing a car to carry it. They had already checked on equipment available at the cabin. Where should they meet? But the school seemed easiest. Then they could ride partway and hike partway till they reached the cabin. Betsy kept track of it all. And there was food to think of, and what to do at the camp. Each patrol turned in ideas. And as the days went by, those ideas were turned into reality. The Happy Six Patrol planned the program. One of the girls drew the caper chart. The Cricket Patrol took charge of equipment. Mrs. Stern, a troop committee member, helped one of them pack the first aid box. There, it just fits. The gay caballeros did the menus and the shopping. Lots of shopping. And the patrol leaders made sure that everything got done, that the plans all tied together. Blanket rolls, the last skill left to learn. The patrol leaders were going to teach their patrols all about it at the next meeting. Following camp craft ABCs, they found it wasn't hard at all. Then suddenly, it was the last meeting. They collected the consent form signed by their parents and had already discussed what to pack in their bedrolls and agreed on a bedtime hour. There wasn't much left to do now, but practice making blanket rolls. The leaders checked the consent forms while the patrol leaders took charge of things, teaching their patrols, practicing leadership themselves. Mrs. Stern, the troop committee member, was there too. She was going along on the camping trip. Teamwork isn't always easy. There's usually someone who wants things her way. But the girls had learned much about pulling together. The going was easier for the gay caballeros. As usual, Nancy, a born teacher, had everything in control. Her patrol seemed to learn easily. They were all learning. Some quickly, some more slowly. And all, like the happy sixes, having fun. The crickets had worked out their problem. And on the big day, each girl would have her personal equipment stowed snugly in her own blanket roll. But it was the gay caballeros who finished first. Prepared now for camping living comfortably in the out of doors. The leaders watched while the last knot was tied. Well, that's how it was. Planning, reading, practicing skills. That's why Mrs. Lawrence isn't worried. That's why she's looking forward to going camping. It's time to start, why, she's all set. And so are the girls.
most of the troop has already arrived at the school steps. Everyone's really excited, impatient to get started. When do we leave? Is everybody here? How could they be so slow? Here comes Susie and Babs on the double. All ready now. Ready at last to go troop camping. There it is. All they'd looked forward to. Cabin and woods and adventure and fun. Mrs. Stern is there to welcome them, to give each girl her blanket roll. It's a big moment. A whole new world is opening up before them. And it is just as wonderful as they had hoped. Getting water from their own pump, cooking supper over an open fire, eating out of doors, applying the things they had learned. Even a rainy evening doesn't dampen the fun. Later, it's hard to settle down in a strange bed with strange night noises and so very much to think about. Breakfast with flapjacks. Uh-oh, they're eating them with sugar. Looks as if Ann did forget the syrup. And now they've gone out to make a map to explore the countryside around them. Naturally, Susie brought the compass along to help them record their locations. Everything they had seen goes on the map. And after it's drawn, Jane and Kathy put it up to help other Girl Scouts find the things they had found. Important things like a bird's nest, a stream, a foxhole. And charted behind it all was the excitement of discovery and the warmth of companionship. After supper capers are over now, and the girls have gathered around the campfire. Yes, it's all gone well. You have learned a lot in the past few months. You know now that it's fun to help a troop go camping. But there's help along the way. There are books, people, and the eagerness of the scouts themselves. There's the background of your own experience. You know about planning and camping skills. But you know that it's the girls who have meant most to the three of you. Leaders and girls, each helping the other to grow. The looks on the faces of the girls tell their own story. A story of the satisfaction and fun of learning, playing, and just being together. <laughs>